that, that could bring them immediate uh, Sure, exactly. The, the original Rosicrucians undoubtedly really were about human empowerment, the opposite of Satanism or Luciferianism, and that's why they had to be taken over. And then what we think of as Rosicrucians today is just Satanism. Yes, because the Rosicrucian Manifesto that was uh, basically published in the 1620s by this guy Colander was actually completely opposed to the Vatican and attacked very harshly the Vatican. And these manifesto were actually put in various cities in Northern Europe, creating a, a, a lot of interest towards this new uh, new. Actually, the Rosicrucians claim to be very old tradition. The Rosicrucians claim to basically be those original high priests that were rebelling to this system that was taken over by the Vatican. Uh, Nick, do you have anything else you'd like to add listening on 1600 AM? Uh, thanks. Um, well, do you, I, I've heard stuff about the Council of Nicaea, or how you pronounce that word. Um, you know, a lot of Christianity was changed, like... Uh, it was possible that Jesus Christ himself was a vegan, and the Roman Empire, whatever you want to call it, changed a lot of Christianity's pure teachings into something totally different to fit their doctrine. So what are y'all's thoughts? Well, you know, they found a lot of the ancient scrolls from the scribes, and the King James pretty much matches up from what I've seen, but some whole books that they didn't agree with did get disappeared. I don't think the text itself has been manipulated that much, but there are whole books that disappeared. You, uh, Leo? Yes. Yeah, they decided to destroy approximately 500 books that talked about the life of Jesus because it didn't fit with the, the system. Of course, if the book was showing a Jesus that was rebellious to society, was somebody who could challenge the empire in a way that they disliked, or maybe was teaching some secret knowledge that they didn't want to give to the public, they just took this book away. I mean, definitely there has been at least officially a few, but maybe many more books that were completely destroyed at that time. And remember that for hundreds of years, only the people from the church were capable of reading these books, because the majority of people in society were not capable of reading. So uh, only the aristocrats and the church had this knowledge. And now they're bringing us back to that today, the complete dumbing down. Thank you, Nick. Great questions. We're skipping this network break. Only this one. Dan in Illinois, you're on the air. Okay, we'll come uh, back. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yes, this is Bible Dan with his Bible in his hand. And I ran into Jacardi Jackson and uh, Paul Joseph Watson at the Washington uh, train station in disguise. So I'm letting you know that the video I'm going to post of me. All right, hold on. Paul Joseph Watson is in England, so that's not true. You mean, you mean David Knight and Jacardi Jackson? Yeah, David Knight. David Knight, the guy with the beard, mustache. Sure, if you got a serious okay. question, go ahead and go to it, sir. All right, uh, I got two. Uh, what is the Pope talking about uh, saying that uh, government officials are, can oppose gay licenses? He just said, uh, essentially, Kim Davis was right to deny gay license to gays. And then my second question uh, the Da Vinci Code. Uh, essentially, Constantine knew that the church Christianity was going to take over, so what he did was he created the office of Pope, but the Pope is really the emperor. Is that correct? I appreciate your call, Dan. Um, let me go to Leo Zagami to, to try to answer that. First off, I just want to say this. Um, Looking at this, and I'm not trying to give this Pope a pass, but I don't want to be sitting here judging people being nasty, which I have been because I'm so threatened by all this, and it's just so obviously over the top. Is the media cherry-picking what the Pope says? I'm trying to read more of what he says, because he will say, hey, gay marriage hurts the family. Hey, uh, people have a right to conscience to say no. Hey, radical Islam is doing some bad stuff. Uh, hey, the family's important, but then it seems like he says these horrible things, too, that the media picks up and magnifies. So he is saying these bad things, but then I find out he says some good things as well. 
but then that stuff doesn't get picked up. So it is very Jewitical. Uh, I guess that's what the Jesuits do is they talk out of both sides of their mouth or what's going on, Leo Zagami? And then his whole question about Constantine. Well, they just give a little, he just gives a little bone here and there, you know, to satisfy the conservatives and the growing dissent that is in the church. I mean, this morning, the newspapers in Italy were talking about the fact that the Pope has not said anything about the gay marriages in the U.S. and that he hasn't opposed anything. And actually, the way of this Pope is basically, oh, well, let's see what we agree on and not what we disagree on. And uh, we should just uh, not point so much on the complex doctrine but on the beauty of Jesus. And that's it. When he says that, then he can say anything. And people believe him. Then he says that Jesus failed. He said Jesus was a failure. Yeah, well, he says Jesus is a failure when it does, you know, when he wants. But then when he suits him, he says uh, instead that we shouldn't look at the complex doctrine, but just at the beauty of Jesus. So Jesus is just this beautiful thing that, I don't know, it's not anymore, it doesn't have any sure. more the value. Well, for folks that don't know, in the real satanic masses that they've had for th over a thousand years, they talk about Christ broken, defeated, failing at the cross, dead. I mean, when I saw him, the look in his eyes when he said that, I got chills. I mean, it was, he's not stupid, he knows exactly what that was, and that was hardcore. Sure, and you know, you mentioned Castel Gandalf, and that's uh, the place near there where they actually do the satanic masses uh, with, uh, with all these priests, uh, the satanic sects, uh, they all gather in this uh, forest, uh, and maybe one day, uh, if we are lucky enough, Alex, uh, we can spot them as uh, you did uh, with the Bohemian uh, Grove. And <laughs> of course, uh, if we are caught by these people, I think that we will really end up uh, badly <laughs> there will be no coming back because uh, uh, there is actually catholic priests that celebrate satanic masses and this is not us saying it is padre amort who is the chief exorcist of the vatican he has clearly stated that there is satanic sets operating in the vatican so yeah. i mean if the chief exorcist of the vatican says this uh, uh, why can't we say that i hear you unbelievable uh Jim in Montana, you're on the air with Leo Zagami. Go ahead. Yes, Alex. Uh, say, I'm a preacher evangelist, and I'm 62 years old. And I was born and raised a Catholic, baptized at birth, and I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, a huge Catholic church. Uh, Catholic grade school and high school educated. I understand. You're ca you were uh, Catholic. Go ahead. Yes, and I'm also a preacher evangelist. Now, what I'm wondering is, what happened to the name above all names, which is Adonai Yeshua Messiah? Yeshua is his name. Now, why are we using this name, Jesus? And why is the Catholic Church involved in pushing this garbage my entire life? No, I don't understand. No, 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 I hear you. Uh, and, and, and God bless you. You know, my feeling on this, and I'm not saying you're being a Pharisee. I understand your frustration. Languages change. Things happen. Uh, you know, the name Jesus is different in different languages. We all know who we're talking about. I don't think God hates us if we get it wrong. You're right. Yeshua, uh, you know, the name of God, you can say Jehovah. Uh, I am that I am. We all know who we're talking about. We all know the fruits of that God. We know the fruits of the devil. And the New World Order brings us bad fruit. God brings us prosperity. But the paradox is we get so much prosperity as Christians, we then become degenerate and decadent. I don't know how we transcend that paradox that God blesses us so much, Leo. God blesses us uh, and at the same time uh, is uh, testing us uh, every day. And of course, uh, having a Pope like this uh, is uh, testing uh, all of uh, the of everybody who thinks uh, of himself as a Christian. Because after saying certain things, uh, you can't really say that this Pope is actually a Christian. It's interesting uh, that uh, we are going through that passage uh, these days. A lot of people are mentioning that passage from the Bible in Acts 2.20 and Revelation 6.20. Uh, 12, which mentions this uh, uh, moon that becomes uh, blood in this particular period of time in which a great earthquake that could have been, of course, the one we just had in Chile. And maybe, so maybe this uh, is the event, the Pope openly saying Christ fell at the cross, total blasphemy. Maybe that's the big, maybe it is signaling some new horrid march into evil. Yeah. Maybe the people who actually for a long time talked about prophecies, they are completely right. <laughs> that, that's the truth.
Yeah, maybe we're here. They just announced they're brain shipping the troops. That's in the mainstream news. Time. I mean, it's all. I, I want to do five more minutes with the other side. Then I know you got to go. I, I want to talk about the astrology and how they're into that and, and, and the Vatican Observatory that I stayed right next to uh, at a hotel while I was there in Rome at least two of the days because uh, I wanted to be able to oversee what was happening and, and try to investigate some areas. Um, but uh, let's continue with the phone calls. It's just a very epic time to be alive. And even if you don't believe solar eclipses have important portents, the elites do, folks. That's why we're looking at it. Uh, you know, it's like saying that some South Islanders go out and headhunt on the full moon. doesn't mean we believe in headhunting. It just means these people from their anthropology, their sociology, do this on full moons. And... Well, the elite are into astrology as well and do weird stuff. Sherry in Texas, you're on the air. Thank you, Alex. Um, my question is about the fact that, that I don't think the Pope said that Christ was a failure. I think that's media spin that said that. No, I mean, I I mean hold on, hold on. He, he said he bodily failed he he as a human. Yeah. He chose that. That's clear in the Bible. So it's saying he failed, but his message did something later. It is a twisting. But sorry, go ahead. I think Christ thought he was a failure because can you not agree, um, Mr. Sargoni, that um, in our humanity, uh, like the Pope, like Christ said, our humanness. I mean, the Pope said about our humanness that uh, in our humanity, it, it, we we lack confidence. Our humanity is tim timorous. We have a hard time believing in ourselves. Christ is not us. Christ said to God, why have you forsaken me? He really thought he was a failure, and that's so human. In, but see, Christ no, that's when he's in the garden realizing he's about to get beat to death and tortured. And you're right, his flesh feels like he's been left alone, but then he guts up, he goes through it, and transcends it. Uh, Leo? But Alex, uh, the, the Pope didn't only put the cross into question uh, in that passage. The cross is the victory. He, he, he actually said that the cross is only a vessel. I mean, saying that the cross is only a vessel, so is only a symbol, means destroying the whole of Christianity. I mean, the cross is the symbol of the sacrifice that you do with your own life, with your own belief, every day, every minute of the day. I mean, the cross is essential for a Christian. So I wouldn't put this into question at all. Well, man, I'm not attacking you. I'm going to pull the full transcript. He does say it in a twisted way, so I can see what you're saying, but I've, I've watched it like five times. I'm going to pull the full transcript back in here. Jakari Jackson, just, just so hot to talk about it, he's not taking a few days off. He's worked like 10 days straight. He's but coming Alex, in to co-host with Kit Daniels in the fourth hour to go over all this. But uh, Ann Leanne Alex, McAdoo, sorry, go ahead. There is even journalists here in Italy. I mean, I'm talking about some of the most specialized Catholic and Vaticanists that are saying the same thing as McAdoo said. So, I mean, it's not only him who says it. They're saying it also here in Italy, Vaticanists, the experts. So You're saying folks are saying the same thing our reporters are saying? Absolutely, yes. I mean, Ma'am, I'm going to let you come back. This is just too important. We're going to go to Robert, Bob, Jay, Mick after that, then let our guests go, and then I'm going to continue with the news we haven't hit yet. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. Spread the word. All right, here's the full quote out of the Washington Post of the Pope's full speech. The cross shows us a different way of measuring success. Ours is to plant the seeds God sees to the fruits of our labors. And if at times our efforts and work seem to fail and produce no fruit, we need to remember that we are followers of Jesus and his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure, the failure of the cross. So that's stated with a twisted, deep meaning that really informed people would understand you could see a failure if you were there that day, but it created a great success. But he doesn't say that knowing to the unwashed masses, Christ failed at the cross which is the inversion of the entire of Christendom that the cross is the great victory. It is just over the top. He goes on, another danger comes when we become jealous of our free time, when we think that surrounding ourselves with worldly comforts will keep us and serve us better, and that's his attack for austerity. Yes, it's good to be poor in the service of the poor if that's what you choose, but it's also good to be successful and lift others up and have prosperity. I mean, I've read the Bible. The problem with this reasoning is it can be blunt, the power of God's daily call to conversion, to encounter with him. It just goes on with a bunch of socialist gobbledygook. And that's what Leo Zagami uh, was getting at. But, but look, he's calling for world government. 
He's calling for global carbon taxes that are a death sentence to many in the third world. I mean, this is the whole globalist project. And they had another pope step down to have him come take over. This is unprecedented. 